Hey, what's up guys? It's Pedro here from NoobCoder.com. And in this tutorial, we are going to be talking about dynamically rendering out a list within React. All right, so to get started, let us say that we start off with an array of people and that this people is from a database of some kind, okay? So for this example, we just have this hard coded, but ultimately we want to render this list out. If we come down here, we see that I've essentially hard coded this list, but what happens if this list changes? Right now we have three people. What happens if this list becomes a hundred people? Well, obviously hard coding like this isn't going to cut it. So we're going to have to dynamically render this out. So before we do that, let's take a look at the app as we have it right now. And you can see that it's nothing special. We're just outputting an unordered list and we're just saying first name, last name, basically. So the very first thing you should ask yourself is how can I output this data without mutating this list? So I don't want to change the state of the people array. I just want to display it. Well, there's a method called the map method, and this is for arrays. So what I'm going to do is let us do some destructuring. So I'm just going to come up here and we'll say cons. And what we're going to do is pull out people from the state. OK, so now from here, we could come down here. We're going to output an unordered list. And now we're going to write some JavaScript. OK, so we have people dot map. And if you never work with the map method, the map method returns a new array, so it doesn't mutate the original state. And this new array is filled with elements that you return. So we're going to be filling this array with some JSX. So this accepts a callback. And within this callback, we are going to get a person object. So this is going to map over people and it's going to return a value. And this value is going to be a person. So what we need to do is return what we want to store in the newly created array. And what we need to do is wrap the data between these list items. So in order to do that, I'm going to cheat. And I'll have the source code in the description in case uh, you want to follow along more directly. So ultimately, we're going to have a newly created array with a bunch of JSX expressions. OK, but we do have to do some modifying. So for example, we don't need to say this.state people. We're getting the person object back from the callback here. So we just replace that with person. And now, if we were to save this, let's give it a test run to see if everything's working. And there you go. So we got the same exact result. OK, so obviously the second way will work for a list of any size. So this could be 100 people, 1,000 people, 2,000 people. This way is only going to work with three people. OK, so that's the benefits of doing it dynamically. But let's take a look at the browser once more. If I come here, hit F12, you see that we get a warning and it says each child within a list should have a unique key prop. So it's complaining that we don't have a key prop and it has to be unique. This is so React can better handle re-renders. OK, so in case your list updates in the future, it knows which list item to update within the DOM. So if we come here, it says pass a key prop. So we're going to pass a key prop. And this key prop is the ID within the person object. Now, in a real application, this ID is going to come from your database. So you should get a primary key and you would use that as your key prop. But for this example, I just hard coded it. So we'll say person.id. We will go ahead and save that. And let's take a look at the browser. So we're going to hit F12 again. You see that that warning is gone. So now, in case you guys don't like the map way, this is probably the most common use case that you'll see when people render out list. 
but there is another way and I'll show you guys what it is. So we are going to build the list using the for each method. So the same exact concept applies. We don't want to mutate the original state. So what we're going to do is make our own array. So I'm just going to say cons and we'll call this person JSX and we'll set that to an empty array. So this is where we're going to store all our JSX. So now I can loop over this people array. So I can say people dot for each. And once again, this is going to accept a callback and we should get back a person object. And within here, all we're going to do is say person JSX dot push to add this to our array. So once again, we need to wrap everything within an LI element. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat again and we are just going to copy this. Let us go ahead and paste this here. And we don't need a return statement. And there you go. So we're done. So this is going to loop through every person within our people array. And we're just going to add this JSX element within this array that we created. Now what we need to do is render out this person JSX array. So what we can do is come down here, same exact thing. We'll make another unordered list. And all we need to do is put this within curly braces and say person JSX. So now if I save this, let's take a look at the web browser and you see that we get the same exact result. So that is pretty much all I wanted to cover within this tutorial. And I'll see you guys in the next one.